This is BYU Sports Nation, brought to you by the BYU Store, simulcast on BYU-TV and BYU-Radio. Now, from Studio B, here's Spencer Linton and Jerem Jordan. BYU Sports Nation is live. Your day-to-day play-by-play in Studio B, presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. Monday, February 8th, wherever and however you're connected, Great to have you with us. I am Spencer Linton, teamed up with the man who hasn't owned seven total rings his entire lifetime, let alone seven Super Bowl rings, Jerem Jordan. Seven rings. That's probably accurate. Yeah, I think I'm on wedding ring three. Are you really? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I lose them all the time. I forgot it. I didn't even bring it. So, uh, yeah, <laughs> maybe it's maybe I'll be on four. I don't know. Just unbelievable with uh, with Thomas uh, Brady there. I, I didn't think he could add to his legacy, but... Winning with someone else, he certainly won the uh, "Hey Bill Belichick, we got divorced and I'm happily over here" thing. So that's interesting. But uh, the Gronk game, that was fun. The Antoine Winfield uh, peace sign game. Uh, I personally bl- blame Tyron Matthew yes, for the Chiefs' loss. Yes, don't poke the bear. Why would you do that? Why would you do that? Oh my gosh, uh, th- this game was lost early. Unfortunately, it was pretty boring. I liked the people I was hanging out with to watch this. But uh, the game was really boring. Yeah, non... No drama. Not exciting, anticlimactic. But Commercials I'm, were fine, I, I guess. I'm with you on the Tyron Matthew thing. And I know that <laughs> Tom talks a bunch of trash. In fact, I had a recent conversation with one of your Seahawks, Will Tukuafu. Nice. He won a Super Bowl ring, and he said, that, L- guy, in vineyard. that guy talks so much trash on the field. Yeah, and he's it. like, and you can't say anything back because it just makes the situation worse for your team if you do. So, yeah. Honey Badger just needs to listen and ignore. He was just honey last oh, night. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> just don't respond. Yeah. Don't retaliate. Now, it only makes things worse. We have not reached out to Jason to see how he's doing today. We assume it's terrible, but we hope he's feeling better soon. Yes. They he, won last year. He That's did cool. tweet that it's a good thing baseball season is on deck because yeah, we know yeah. Shep is a on huge deck. baseball fan. That's a baseball pun. The, the pure sport. Hey, the pure sport. The, the pure sport. <laughs> what? Like stickball from the 1890s? <laughs> the pure sport? Says who? Soccer is the beautiful game. I call baseball the pure sport. So it's been around forever. It just, there's. No, it hasn't. It's been like 150 years. Okay, only 100. Only 150. What did they years. do anciently for sports? Because we act <laughs> they like. They ran. We, well, like basketball existed with like the Aztecs and the Mayans or something, right? Ran and jumped. They ran marathons. Like they played Mortal Kombat. Sometimes the guys that ran the marathon and won would seriously, they would die. They literally would die after. I know. Are there sports in heaven? I'm a little scared if there's not. That's just, that's a topic for another day. Write it down. Write it down, production team. Are there sports in heaven? Are there sports in heaven? Uh, speaking of rings, how about we get you a ring for one of those epic flag football titles you won at BYU? Who cares about that? Let's start there, right? Fun. Here's your Bling Bling Not Monday show play. lineup. Game day for BYU basketball hosting the number one ranked and overwhelmingly undefeated Gonzaga Bulldogs. Do they have any weaknesses? We'll ask former Gonzaga star Dan Dickow. What would another massive upset of the Zags mean for BYU's NCAA tournament resume? Plus, BYU football finalizes their revised coaching staff, adding some big-time experience, and we recap a weekend full of BYU wins. Bring on today's BYUSN headlines. It is a Monday ball night in the Marriott Center. Number one Gonzaga plays BYU on BYU Radio and ESPN. 11 Eastern, the late one. Pre-game an hour earlier. BYU is an 11-point dog out of Vegas. Also, the St. Mary's game scheduled for Thursday is postponed due to COVID. <sighs> Cougars next game after tonight, 10 days away at Pacific. So no San Francisco, no St. Mary's. Return trips to Provo. Yeah. Trying to get Duke and North Carolina, seeing if they're interested. <laughs> <laughs> updated bracketology as BYU is a nine seed in Joe Lenardi's uh, latest bracket on ESPN. Hoping for an update this morning. That is as of, I believe, Friday. BYU football finalizes that coaching staff with the hire of Daryl Funk. As the Cougars' new offensive line coach, Funk brings a resume with more than 30 years of coaching experience, including stints with Michigan, Purdue, and San Diego State. Most recently, Funk was the offensive line coach and run game coordinator for the Roadrunners of UTSA, which, fun fact, featured the 19th best 
rushing attack in the country last season. BYU saw it up close and personal Yeah, and with that was, Sincere McCormick. And that was two years ago when he was there. Yeah, he wasn't on the sidelines for this last season. Yeah. Men's volleyball sweeps number eight UCLA Saturday. Setter Will Stanley, hello, returned for the Cougars, who ended up with a split against the Bruins. Made a big difference in that one. Gabby Garcia Fernandez hit a career high 800, 12 kills, zero errors on 15 swings. Pretty good. BYU hosts top 10 Pepperdine. We'll find out exactly where in the top 10 they fit. Probably around 6 or something. Friday and Saturday on BYU TV. 10th ranked BYU women's soccer opens their unique spring season with a dominating 5-1 to one victory over Utah. The Cougars wasting very little time scoring thanks in part to the first of three Cameron Tucker goals on the night. Olivia Smith into the box, gets to the end line, pass across, and knocked home by Cameron Tucker. Four and a half minutes in, BYU strikes first. BYU will play two more Pac-12 teams over the next week, including a road showdown at number four UCLA on Friday, and they visit number 14 USC February 15th, a week from today. I'm wondering if in soccer they're, well, obviously they played a Pac-12 team. They didn't make them wear masks. I don't understand where in volleyball they're making them wear masks, but not in soccer and basketball where you're literally running around with everybody. I don't get it. It was different. Okay, number 12 Cougar Gymnastics beat number 15 Southern Utah, the Flippin' Birds, with a season high 196-825 to (laughs) win the meet. Friday night, Cougars posted a 49 or better in each event. Helody Sirene dominated the bars with the season best 9-9, but Jordan Matthews stole the show, made waves online with their Napoleon Dynamite inspired floor routine. That was <laughs> awesome. All rise and shout. Give me some of your thoughts. It's time for What's Trending. You're talking about it, and so are we. It's What's Trending on BYU Sports Nation. You think anyone thinks I'm a loser because I go home to Starlet at night? <laughs> <laughs> we opened that door ah, throughout the show. BYU basketball against Gonzaga tonight. Is it strictly about winning for the Cougars right now? They've got great marks. They're playing really well. Gonzaga's on another level, though. So is it about winning, or is there something else there, Jerem? It's always about winning. Uh, if BYU won tonight, that'd be amazing. Um, I mean, you could almost argue that, hey, if BYU wins tonight, it's actually a bigger win than last year because Gonzaga's number one, not two. And this would actually help BYU play in what's called March Madness, which didn't happen last year due to the pandemic. I don't know if you guys knew that. Uh, no, it, it's, but it's also about more than that because, listen, you said on another level. I think they're on levels. Like Gonzaga, Baylor, the field. That's just how it is. In the league, uh, Gonzaga is the cream of the crop. Every year, no one really touches them. Sometimes they get beat. But this year, they're not going to even play a single-digit game probably in the league or the tournament. If it happens, it's on until it's not. They're an 11-point favorite against BYU tonight. Yeah, and, and the reason for that is we're too close to the sun on this one. Look, BYU's 15-4 and four with a net that's sub-30 and has f- three of its four losses to tournament teams. BYU's a good team. BYU's a single-digit seed. That makes sense to me on the road. Now, if it was like 17, it's like, ah, that's probably high. But contact is number one. They're so good. Listen, BYU needs to go into the mindset that they're trying to win this. Yes, but we here can talk differently, okay? Realistically, it's about competing, getting better, getting those metrics up, which will happen no matter what, because BYU's playing number two net team Gonzaga, number one in the polls. I think uh, if BYU competes better, this will give me the idea that, hey, in the second round, should BYU play a team like Gonzaga, if BYU's an eight or nine, that they could compete. That's that's what I'm looking at tonight. It's not whether BYU wins or loses this game. Chances are BYU loses this game. Just don't play Gonzaga or Baylor in the second round. That'd be nice. And because of the drop-off, maybe BYU has a chance against the other number one seeds as an eight or a nine. Maybe. Because they're not Gonzaga or Baylor. I think BYU's biggest issue this year is, is the lack of three-point shooting. Last year, we felt like, and a lot of national pundits felt like, hey, BYU could do anything. Like, they're a Final Four dark horse because when you're the number one three-point shooting team, anything is possible. BYU actually uh, matched up better last year on the guard line with Gonzaga than this year. BYU does not match up well on the guard line this year. They don't. There's just too much talent there with Suggs, Kispert, Ayayi, and company. When Ayayi is like the best or second best option and BYU had TJ Haas and, and Jake Toulson, oh yeah, BYU could win that game because Yoli Childs could match up with uh, Pachushev in terms of production. This year it's different. Like, Gideon George and, and Caleb Lohner played an uh, excellent game off the bench up in Spokane. 
Those guys are starters, we expect tonight, based on the Portland game. But, yeah, I, I don't want a, BYU to be down by 32 at any point. BYU lost by 17. Uh, BYU's got a new starting lineup. Alex Barcella struggled, 3 of 11, 9 points. So I expect BYU to play better than they did the first time. I'm hoping for a closer margin, the whole moral victory thing. But it's bigger than winning or losing for BYU's larger pursuits, which are, which is and are the NCAA tournament. For the team and within the team circles and within the coaching staff, yes, it's always about winning. That is the only thing. You play to win the game. Herm Edwards has said it. We have repeated it ad nauseum in the sports media world. Yes, you show up with the intention to play and win. But given the circumstances of where BYU and Gonzaga are positioning for the NCAA tournament, BYU could take a massive step forward tonight in the eyes of national pundits and the committee, even with a loss. If BYU is within single digits and they're the only single digit loss uh, that uh, Gonzaga produces in As West Coast Conference league, play, yeah. then that's worth something. Like you could you could le- and, legitimately say, yeah, I thought BYU played pretty well. They they were way better than they were in Spokane. I'm going to bump them up a seed line. And no one's actually going to see this game on the East Coast. It's way too late. It's at 11. They're just going to see box scores. So if you see a box score that you says know what I mean? 88-81, it's like, oh, Gonzaga was actually challenged. It was an interesting game, yeah. So there are things to be earned for BYU even in a loss. As much as the team doesn't want to hear it, the coaches don't want to hear it, then, yeah, ignore us. It is about the, the bigger picture. Yeah. There, there's way more in play. And yeah. the important people will be watching. I know that the general public might not stay up that late, but the important people that do the bracketing will absolutely be watching. So BYU has some things to prove tonight, win or lose. And I know that Gonzaga is seemingly unbeatable, and it's hard to find any weaknesses. You st- Oh, they're aptly be- pointed out, Jerem, that their backcourt is unbelievably talented. Yeah, they're they're too good. They're just too good. They have three I'm NBA on- players in their backcourt. Three. You think uh, yeah, yeah, he's NBA? Yes, at some point, second rounder. I'm not sure about uh, yeah, but yeah. yeah, two if the three. I think that they have three NBA players in their backcourt. Not a shocker based on what they've done. Well, they, the they haven't court- produced too many backcourt NBAers actually. Okay, what I'm it's saying is based players. on what they've done with the three. I'm talking about individual players this season on this team. Okay, I think all three of them are going to be in the NBA. I, I, yeah, Ayayi is in several draft projections. We can look at them later. But the point is... So is Killian and Tilly. They're really good, okay? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we don't need to argue no one, this. No one, okay? I, I, all I'm saying is they have NBA no, this talent is Gonzaga, all over the floor. Gonzaga Sports Nation. They have NBA talent all over the floor. We're number one. But not a ton of it in the front court. So yeah, they maybe... Only, they only have one maybe NBA player in the front court. Maybe BYU <laughs> can... Get someone in foul trouble yeah. and do some things in the front court. BYU has been yeah. very good shooting from the field, inside the paint. So can BYU? Yeah, that's do not anything? Where, that's not what I'm worried about. I'm worried about three pointers. BYU doesn't make uh, enough threes and at a high enough clip to bring down an opponent like Gonzaga. Now uh, Gonzaga has only played one single digit game all year. You know it's crazy though. <laughs> like so, West Virginia, who was ranked 11th and 15th at the time, five point game. That was the third game of the year. Not even Kansas. Not even. Oh, I wish we would have had the Baylor game December 5th. Not even third ranked Iowa played a single digit game with Gonzaga. Unbelievable. What's interesting about this BYU three point shooting season is this is the team that holds the record for most made threes in a game this season, not last season. Yeah. So are they capable of doing that again? Maybe, but against Gonzaga? Against Gonzaga? I don't know if they can swing that against just, a really, really athletic. And and we're going to talk to Dan Dickow about Gonzaga and what they can do defensively against BYU, but they're athletic on the perimeter. It's going to be hard for BYU to get a, a bunch of open three-point looks against that talented backcourt. Let me tell you the dumbest thing anyone could say to you today. You ready for it? Listen, BYU's got to play perfect to win this game. No, they don't. Uh, when BYU beat number one Gonzaga, BYU trailed 18-2. to two. Is that perfect? No. You just have to be better than them on that night. So we'll see if BYU is tonight. Topic two, BYU basketball resume update. So the good news is BYU continues to climb everywhere. Net up to 27. Oh, I expect this to be like 22 or 23 tomorrow. Um, ho- hopefully it's that. At really, least 24. Really that high? I feel like Plus the closer one. you get to one, like it's just harder to move up spots because there are fewer spots to take. Fine, over. they'll go down 10. Uh, Ken no. Palm, 37. No, hopefully 24, 25. Awesome. 25. Plus one in uh, Ken Palm, BPI plus two, KPI plus four. BPI 17 in KPI. Okay. 
Uh, strength of record stayed the same. Sagarin, 24. So BYU is in a great spot right now. BYU is like clearly a 7, 8, 9 seed, somewhere in there. No one's saying BYU is a 7. Uh, no, uh, rarely is anyone saying 8 right now. Uh, kind of 9 is the uh, consensus, it would seem, as we look at the bracketology. Lenardi 9, again, waiting for an update for today. That happens tomorrow. He, he'll come out with his sheet today. I don't know how much information is there, but the We're under five bracket. weeks to go. Every day, Joey. We'll come come on. Tomorrow. Come on, man. You have one job. So, literally, what do you do outside of this, this uh, thing? CBS Sports, 9 seed. Bracket Matrix, 8.5. So BYU's in a great spot. Isn't it weird how good BYU is this year? After last year, I, I just I just think it's fun to see that BYU answered. It took two grad transfers. Like Mark Pope and the staff had to do what they do, which is get transfers. And Matt Harms and Brandon Averett. This is Brandon Averett. Alex Barcelos stepped up. It's about more than those guys, though. If those those three kind of do their thing, great. But it's more about the Caleb Loners and uh, you know the Spencer Johnsons. That, like BYU's still playing ten deep. I think this is the plan for the rest of the season, barring that someone just implodes. But uh, so far, so good with the resume and bracketology, man. If BYU covers, meaning they're within 11 points or fewer, that legitimately could happy. push them up a seed line. Like, Don't be surprised to see BYU on the eight seed line tomorrow if they're covering against Gonzaga tonight. That's how I'd, good I'd Gonzaga is. I'd be happy is. with that margin. Yes. Yes. We're not on the team. If BYU loses by nine tonight, I'd be like, hey. You know what? That's only the second time anyone's played exactly. that close. Exactly. How about that? Hey, and how about BYU receiving one, one point, one vote in the latest AP Top 25 poll? That's great. That's, I, hey, you know this is my favorite thing, to talk about the Top 25 when you're not in it. They're somewhere in the low 40s. <laughs> They're somewhere in the low 40s. Tied for 43rd, Jeremy. So BYU's 43rd in the Top 25. Mm-hmm. Yep. Sounds, sounds about right. It's delicious. <laughs> Our question of the day. If BYU beats Gonzaga tonight, put on the blue goggles. Hold on. I I have the only ones that actually apply here. Okay. Blue goggle alert. Blue goggle (laughs) alert. Blue goggle alert. Oh, I see it. Let's uh, appropriate this with some blue goggles. Wow. If BYU beats Gonzaga tonight, would it be the best win over Gonzaga in the history of these two teams playing against each other? Mm. There have been some Epic yeah. BYU wins. Three in Spokane, and then last year, court storming against number two. Like, Yeah, those are the top five wins. BYU won a couple times early when Gonzaga was still in the top 25 range. Yeah, it's a and different And BYU beat Gonzaga in the NCAA tournament to go to the Sweet 16. I blame Jimmer for all this. So if BYU beats Gonzaga tonight, Gonzaga would it be the best win over the Zags all time? Let's go to Voice of the Nation. This is... The Voice of the Nation on BYU Sports Nation. At Tyler Gregory on Twitter answers, yes, 100%. Not only would it bring lots of confidence and build BYU's resume at a good time, but it would shock the college basketball world by beating a team that looks invincible against every team they play. All of the things that he brings up in the early part of the tweet were applicable last year. Shock the college basketball world build the resume at a good time, bring lots of confidence. But the one thing that's different about this year is Gonzaga does look invincible right now. I think when BYU beat Gonzaga and the Zags were one, similarly, but 29-0 and going for the perfect regular season, that was the best one. On senior night? I think that was the best one. There was a Snapchat filter that went out for 30-0, and the newspaper the next day, the whole <laughs> thing. Like, to me, that was the best one. There have been some great ones. I was up there for one of them, and it was unbelievable. But uh, the first one, I think, right? But, uh, yeah, it would be amazing. But I'm going with that one for the best one ever. Yeah, the first one where you shaved your head as yeah. a consequence, Yeah, that win single-handedly got BYU into the NCAA tournament. I would dare say I got BYU into the NCAA tournament. My lack of faith in the team that night motivated them properly. I took one for the team mm. to get us, yes, us, into the tourney. Is that the greatest BYU road trip you've ever been on? Because you went to Portland, you watched Tyler Haas set the all-time scoring record, and then you followed that up with a trip to Spokane no, two days no, later. No, 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 um, It was, uh, what, oh, you know, oh, five at Wyoming. That was the best one. <laughs> Coming up. <laughs> you had bottles thrown at you. Would you rather go one for one <laughs> or one for three in a Super Bowl? And we'll talk to Dan Dickow. He's a Gonzaga legend and a radio host in Spokane. Are there any weaknesses for Gonzaga that BYU could potentially exploit tonight? This is BYU Sports Nation. BYU Sports Nation is presented by the BYU Store, 
official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. Oh, it's a ball night tonight in the Marriott Center. BYU hosts top-ranked Gonzaga. BYU Radio's Cougar pregame live with Jason Shepard begins at 10 Eastern. The game on the radio and ESPN an hour later. We are live in Studio B on a Monday with your day-to-day BYU Sports play-by-play. I'm Spencer Linton, teamed up with Jerem Jordan. Joining us now, a legendary Zag and co-host of the Dickow and Slim Show on Spokane's 700 ESPN. Dan Dickow joins us to talk Gonzaga BYU on the Deseret First Credit Union Hotline. Dan, welcome to the show. How are you this morning? Things are well. It's just nice that uh, we get to talk about a, a GU BYU matchup uh, because, with as you guys know, this topsy turvy COVID and impacted season, you never know what the schedule is going to hold. And I'm glad they were able to get this one kind of moved up to allow some other games to be played over these next few weeks. Amen to all of that. I'm not sure there's anybody that would know this Gonzaga team better than you other than Mark Few based on how closely you follow them, what you mean to the program. So let's start here. Is this the best Gonzaga team you have ever seen play basketball in Spokane? Well, they're up there. It's to be determined. That's for sure. That uh, 2017 team that uh, lost to your BYU Cougars in McCarthy to kind of ruin the undefeated run before they went to the final four and title game uh, definitely has, you know, some claim to that title right now. Defensively, that team was was phenomenal, and they were very good on offense. Cheers team is unbelievable on offense, and they're getting better on defense. Uh, I think number one or number two offensive efficiency, depending on what Baylor uh, has done over the last week. Uh, And then defensively, you know, they're getting better. As I mentioned, their efficiency numbers are are starting to, to go in the right direction. Um, you know, but again, this team is going to win games based off of their offense. And if they win a title, it will be because of their defense. The expectations are so high, uh, in, in Spokane. Um, what, in fact, we were at the WCC media days a couple of years ago when St. Mary's actually was picked to win the league. And we talked to Randy Bennett and Mark Few that day. And we were like, Randy, I'm really sorry. This is just, it's going to be tough to win this league. Right. So is it final four or national championship or bust? Is that the expectation? it kind of feels that way when you talk to people around Spokane. And and I think part of it is because Baylor and Gonzaga have distanced themselves from everybody else in the field this year. Um, You know, GU being uh, number one in the preseason and then just coming out right off the bat and and smacking Kansas, West Virginia, uh, Iowa, Virginia, Um, you know, it it definitely has given a lot of credence to, to that preseason number one ranking. Um, but you always hate to say, hey, if they don't make a Final Four, uh, the season is a waste. Because, again, at the end of the day, so many times the season is about the journey of, of start to finish and what has happened. Um, but I do know there will be a lot of disappointment if by chance they don't get there. Vancouver, Washington's finest. Dan Dickow with us on BYU Coup! Sports Nation. Seriously. So I get home the other night and uh, rolling in from work, um, and I noticed that Pacific and Gonzaga are like a three-point game with nine minutes to play. And my wife says to me, whoa, that's unexpected. And I said, you know, you just watch. Gonzaga is going to win this game by like 20. They're going to win by like 20 because that's what they do. Dan, at any point, were you concerned with where Gonzaga was against Pacific? Or are you concerned about anything that they will face going forward in the West Coast Conference? No, I wasn't concerned. And the reason why is because – Pacific got absolutely smacked in Spokane about two weeks before that game. Uh, it was like 31 to five or something right off, right out of the gates. Uh, Damon Stoudemire, I think is a very good coach. I think he's underrated nationally. I will say this. He's not going to be at Pacific long. There's going to be a, an opening at a bigger big time job and he's going to get it and he's going to take that program um, and have a lot of success. So you knew they were going to be prepared. You knew they were going to play, uh, much harder than they did in Spokane. And quite frankly, this is an interesting year. You go on the road, you got to find ways to create your own e- energy. And Gonzaga is going to have that kind of question tonight when they play at the Marriott Center. Usually you, you're able to kind of gear up, know there's 19, 20,000 fans that are right on top of you being extremely loud and boisterous. Can Gonzaga create energy with from within as opposed to having to create it based off of a curve? 
crowd. And you're going to see some games like that throughout the course of the season. On January 7th, these two teams uh, hurriedly met in the kennel, and uh, Gonzaga won convincingly by 17, led by 32 in the game. Do you expect something similar, or do you expect a closer margin game with BYU this time around? Well, I I think, to be honest, I think in the WCC this year, there's a large gap. Gonzaga, then BYU, and then from BYU to everybody else, there's a very large gap as well. I think BYU is an absolute tournament team. I think when I looked at the net the last time yesterday or the day before, they were maybe 28, 29, somewhere in there. Uh, They're a very good team. When you look at their resume, their only losses are that Gonzaga game you mentioned, USC, who should be in the tournament, Boise State, who should be in the tournament, uh, and then Pepperdine, which um, Pepperdine's talented. Coach Romar's doing a nice job of of getting some uh, excitement going in that program. And so I I really think it will be a good game, but I'll just be honest. I think Gonzaga is going to end up with the win. Uh, understandably, uh, you and everybody Dan, so in Vegas Dan, and everybody so around we. the world, <laughs> <laughs> including us here at Studio B, feeling like, yeah, Gonzaga's probably going to win this game. Now, if, if there is any weakness within this Zags team, what, what is it? What, where is it? Because we can't see it. You know, I, I think the biggest weakness is front court depth. Drew Timmy is uh, he's putting together an All-American type season. Um, Whether or not he gets that accolade, it's hard to say because I think Kispert at this moment is a lock. Kispert, there's a good chance he will be the national player of the year, which would be an awesome honor for Gonzaga. But if you you look at at Gonzaga's front court, Balo's out with an injury now probably another two weeks-ish. So Coach Few has definitely not got comfortable playing uh, Zakharov, the seven-foot sophomore from Russia. Um, they've slid Watson to the five at times, um, which puts Kispert at the four in, in different lineups. Um, so can a team pin fouls on Timmy early in the game to make it interesting and put coach few in a bind where he has to make a decision. Do I put him back in? Uh, do we change our lineup? How do we play? Um, but I really, I think that's the really the only kind of question mark about Gonzaga this year. Hope is a powerful emotion. Despair is also powerful. Every year, BYU goes into the league, and I think, well, second would be great. What's the secret sauce with Mark Few in this program? Because what he has done is as dominating as anybody has done in any sport in NCAA history. Well, you get, I get asked that question a lot um, from different kind of media outlets. There really is no special kind of recipe to what Gonzaga has done. There's a number of things that you can kind of look at and say, these things are important. One, um, the consistency within the coaching staff. I mean, Mark Few is an assistant under uh, Dan Fitzgerald and Monson for 10 years or so, and they started building uh, what was becoming Gonzaga basketball. Now you've got Tommy Lloyd. He's been an assistant coach there for, for 20 years. Brian Michelson's been there for you know 10 to 12 years in different capacities. Roger Powell Jr. is now in his second year, but he's showing tremendous signs of of being a guy that could be there for quite some time if he doesn't have an opportunity to to leave for a head coaching job himself. So there's been a consistency of coaching staff and the message that they put to their players. And with that message, it's a message of, hey, when we're when we're recruiting you and we're evaluating you, are you got to be skilled enough to play at Gonzaga? Uh, You got to obviously be athletic enough to play at Gonzaga and check those boxes, but you have to kind of fit the mold of buying into the culture of I'm going to, I'm going to maximize my individual talents within a team framework of we're going to go win games and we're going to do it the right way. We're not going to put me over we um, to kind of, you know, bolster my career. It's all about buying in and fitting into the, the, the framework of the team. Like I mentioned, and Gonzaga's missed on some guys here there over the last few years. But when you look at the misses they've had, very few and far in between, and they've done a tremendous job of, of making sure guys fit that before they get there. And then they improve throughout their, the course of their career. Gonzaga legend Dan Dickow on BYU Sports Nation. The Zags are going to have a hard time summiting any farther because they're already, most people believe, the clear number one in the country And there's this idea that, well, maybe just to make sure everything goes smoothly getting into the NCAA tournament, 
They should just shut it down and not play in the West Coast Conference Tournament because there are bigger prizes to be had, clearly. What's the Zags' stance, in your opinion, on the approaching West Coast Conference Tournament? Do you expect to see him in Vegas at the Orleans Arena? You know, that's an interesting question, and I, I've read a few things here or there. I, I have not had any conversations with, with Coach Few or Athletic Director Mike Roth, um, you know, so I'm not kind of privy to any inside information. I think shutting it down would be the wrong decision. Um, obviously, their body of work and their resume, you know they're going to be in the NCAA tournament. Um, but if you look at how active Coach Few has been to try to add games while – opponents have had pauses you can tell that he's trying to get his team as many opportunities to play in big games and he's been on record saying he owes it to Corey Kispert he owes it to Drew Timmy he owes it to these guys to provide them as normal of college basketball season as he can under the circumstances Um, now the second part of your question as far as the you know WCC conference tournament you know that's an interesting one because you're, you're looking at sending anywhere from, you know, eight, nine, 10 teams to a same spot. And if one team by chance has it and spreads it, that, that could be uh, something that is a huge detriment to, you know, not only the team and the individual that has it, but the other teams in the league, in particular Gonzaga, if something were to happen. Um, so I, I, I know that there's got to be, conversations going on around that but I I don't have any more information about what their true stance would be yeah it seems risky it just does like in the same ilk that we're talking about the NBA all-star game and it's like why would they play that you know um I don't understand why they play the tournament outside of the legality of the tv rights and the money you want from that and you're not getting the gate for the attendance but it, it is a complicated thing so when you look at the uh, Gonzaga, we are constantly trying to make sure people understand how to say Gonzaga. Because the national – it's like Oregon, you know? It's just the stupidest thing. Yeah. But Gonzaga is very uh, often there. And then Gonzaga no. is the one that happens. It's gone Zaga, correct? Yes. yes. Yeah. No, you're right. It's, it, it is one of those funny things. I mean – the easiest way that I've ever heard it described is do you zig and zag or do you zig and zog? Yeah, you know, exactly. I mean, people say good and zog. Uh, no, I mean, it's not that hard if you just look at it in those terms. And you're right, it's not gun, it's gone. Uh, it's a pretty easy, um, you know, explanation or it's a pretty easy pronunciation um, in, in my estimation. But again, you know, we live in a tiny pocket of the Pacific Northwest. You're going to get these... <laughs> you know, East Coast media elites that, you know, nothing good ever happens west of the Mississippi River. <laughs> what is this, 1830? Come on, guys. I Let's can't go. wait to watch the yeah. Zogs and the Cougars play tonight. It's going to be epic. Exactly. <laughs> hey, Dan. Th- yeah, for sure. Thanks for the time, man. Uh, we appreciate it as always. It's been fun to talk basketball with you. We'll do it again soon. Absolutely. Hopefully tonight's a good game and best of luck to uh, BYU the rest of the way. You got it, man. Dan Dickow on the Deseret First Credit Union Hotline. Deseret First, you know why we show how. When I was a kid in Vancouver, uh, I moved to Utah when I was 11, Dan Dickow was at Prairie in Vancouver and it just like dominated and was a big deal. Uh, and so I've known about Dan Dickow since I was like 13. Legend. Yeah, he's awesome. Of the so. Pacific Northwest. And listen, like we talked about earlier, if BYU wins tonight, amazing, right? That's not the expectation. The team is going to go in with that mindset of we're going to do what we did last year. But realistically, it's bigger than just winning and losing. There's, there's no, it's not. But they're the number one team. So there's a, lot to, there's a lot to win in spite of the game as well tonight. It's interesting to think about what the impact would potentially be for this BYU team on their resume compared to what it was for impacting their resume when they did it last year. Yeah, I, because this year could mean something. Yeah, yeah. Coming up, does BYU need the St. Mary's game rescheduled or not? And what was the best Super Bowl commercial? We'll tell you next. This is BYU Sports Nation. This segment of BYU Sports Nation is presented by Visible Supply Chain Management. Tuesday, 8.30 Eastern on the BYU TV app. Watch BYU Basketball with Mark Pope. This is Coach Greg Bell. Recap tonight's Gonzaga game. Gonzaga chat with Connor Harding. And we'll have a fresh deep blue. It's Gideon George's turn. I've looked forward to this one. His amazing journey from Nigeria to Provo. I'm trying to think of what the equivalent would be messing up BYU's name. 
Brigham. B- 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 Brigham. Brigham Young. Br- <laughs> Brigham Young. <laughs> he is Jaron Jordan. I'm Spencer BYU. Linton. And this is Brigham Young University Sports Nation. Let's whip it! The Cougar Whip Round presented by Visible Supply Chain Management, tackling America's most challenging shipping problems. Brother John Rothstein has BYU at 36 in his top 45. Too high, low, or just right? I think that is just right, which is why BYU is right on that nine seed line. I'd like to see BYU be low 30s in his power 36 and maybe climb up towards that seven or eight seed line. Realistically, BYU is going to have to be flirting with the top 25 uh, in the net rankings and in these power rankings to be the seven seed that we hope they might climb to. You uh, sub-28 in four of the six major metrics. So I say BYU needs to be low 30s, if not high 20s. I okay. think he's a little low. Okay. Thursday, St. Mary's at BYU basketball game postponed over the weekend. Ugh. <sighs> Jerem, does BYU need to have the St. Mary's game rescheduled? I think so. Another quad two would be great at home. It's a quad one game for St. Mary's, by the way, so their net raises as well. I think it's going to help if BYU plays St. Mary's. I always want to play St. Mary's and Gonzaga. I, it always helps BYU regardless of the uh, result. Better we always want BYU to beat St. Mary's. And if the Cougars had that opportunity and swept the season series against St. Mary's, then just maybe they would be a little bit higher in John Rothstein's poll and Andy Katz's power rankings and all the important metrics. Yeah, and those are just opinion polls. But the actual metrics, yes, I think they'd climb even higher. Right. In the Ringer NFL Draft Guide, their comps for Zach Wilson are Baker Mayfield and Henry Rowan Gartner from Rookie (laughs) of the Year. Is Wilson more Mayfield than Rowan Gartner? (laughs) I'm not even sure how to answer this question. <laughs> Good grief. Uh, I would say more Mayfield, but I think Zach is more suited for the NFL than Baker Mayfield. He's definitely not Rowan Gartner. Rabin Boozer, or whatever the other the coach calls him. He, he calls him a different name like every time. <laughs> Bulldozer. And then he finally calls him the correct name, and he goes, what did he what? call him? Yeah. At the end of the movie. Oh, he's more Mayfield than Rowan Gartner for sure, but I don't really like the Zach Wilson to Baker Mayfield comparison at all. I just think they're totally different style quarterbacks. He's more Rowan Gardner because he has a better arm than okay. Baker Mayfield. Okay. Uh, Rowan Gardner, obviously, you know, uh, his arm becomes just Talk amazing. that arm back, you can hit and it. it. And it's manifest. <laughs> yeah, it's manifested from him throwing the ball back from a homer and then he has to run out. He's more Rowan Gardner than Mayfield. How about that? <laughs> The legendary Andy Reid, BYU alum, has coached now in three Super Bowls. Of course, won the big game in early 2020. Jeremy, would you rather go one for one in the big game or one for three in a Super Bowl format? That's an interesting question. Would you like to lose twice is what we're asking. Um, I think I think I would rather go one for three because there's notability in getting to that yes. game. Now, Marv Levy is considered a great coach, but not one of the greatest because he never won one. But Andy won one, so you're good. I'd go one for three, especially with Andy Reid's resume, because he did it with two different teams. Yeah, and... That's really difficult to do. I won't be shocked if they're back there. Like, we could again, see that same game again, next year. Yes, he could be two for four next at this time next year. Two for four, what I typically do from the foul line in a pickup game. What was your favorite Super Bowl commercial? The Doritos 3D commercial was flat. Matthew McConaughey was fantastic. All right. thought there were some really uh, interesting things within that commercial. And then the Toyota commercial with the feel-good one, the 13-time Paralympic gold medalist swimmer. That that one was like, whoa. That was deep. That was nice. Yeah, that was really touching. I like that one a lot. Although, I really hope they have flood insurance for their house. All right. Um, mine was all the Paramount Plus commercials. I just couldn't get enough, said no one. <laughs> The 17th streaming service that you have the opportunity now to purchase. I was like, do I even watch any of these shows? Beavis and Butthead's going to be on Paramount Plus? Good to know. SpongeBob, 200 episodes, Jerem. I've never really watched SpongeBob. Wait, Beavis and Butthead? They were in the commercials. I must have missed that one. I must have missed that (laughs) one. (laughs) Coming up. What will be the largest lead for (laughs) Cornholio? I mean, BYU tonight. (laughs) Oh, my goodness. Oh, jeez. The 2021 BYU football staff now complete. What will the new hires mean to BYU? This is BYU Sports Nation. <laughs> BYU Sports Nation is presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. Our new BYU Radio Men's Volleyball Show, Over the Top, no, it's not about arm wrestling for the millionth time, is on demand as Steve Vale and I take you inside Cougar Volleyball. Let's do it on the BYU Radio app. Catch it live Saturdays at 2.30 Eastern throughout the season. And the BYU Radio app is your home for more Cougar sports 
content and other great programs. Welcome back to BYU Sports Nation live from Studio B. Kalani Satake bringing the funk to Provo. And Kevin Clune, for that matter. Both of those uh, hirings were announced last week. Daryl Funk, the new offensive line coach. By the way, Kevin Clune oh, is going to join us on BYU know. Sports Nation tomorrow. Coach Satake, understandably excited about filling those voids within his staff. Jerem, what makes you most excited when you think about the revamped BYU football staff? Clune, yeah, Clune we talked about last week uh, with, with Daryl Funk. Tons of experience, like 33 years coaching, 25 on the O-line. Feels like Jeff Grimes a little bit, although Jeff's was at a little bit of a higher level. But Funk was at Michigan for, for four years, and he was also at Purdue, not to mention experience with San Diego State, Colorado State, Ball State. Um, so, yeah, he, he gets it. He, he played at Colorado State in the 80s. He went 0 for 3, and then his senior year, they beat BYU in 86 here. Um, and then San Diego State, 0 9 and 10. 10, a little controversy with that game, you know. Uh, but Daryl Funk is here, and uh, he's a guy that is ready to step in and coach an experienced group that did lose three starters in a first team All American, but there's, we think there's some real talent there. So I'm, I'm excited about this hire because. BYU is at a point where they want to not just be a seven-win team in independence. They want to still schedule hard, but kind of get to that nine-and-a-half range and become a relevant team. And Daryl Funk's a guy that if you're good and you're coming off a top 15 season, you plug a guy like that in. So it's awesome that Daryl Funk uh, could be hired at BYU. That's awesome. I'm really excited about the experience he brings to Provo. And it's not just in one or two or even three programs. He's been everywhere. He's worked with so many high-level coaches, and I like that about Jeff Grimes when he came in because he had been around the block and he had been on these elite-level programs. Daryl Funk, to me, has that vibe a little bit because he's been influenced by so many high-level coaches, and so I like the hefty experience he will bring to Provo. I saw a tweet from his daughter-in-law, who is a reporter in Indianapolis, shortly after the announcement was made official on Twitter, and thought, oh, that's nice, you know. And she's like, well, BYU is literally getting the best. And I'm like, okay, family bias. But then when I saw his former players start to get involved on Twitter, after about like the 10th tweet, I was like, oh, man, like this guy has made a lasting impact on a lot of people. They're really excited about what he can bring to BYU, speaking of the coaching staff, um, and, re- and ready to get going. So I, I like what he he was doing uh, when he was last coaching at UTSA in 2019. And Did he take last year off? I had that question based on everything I've, we'll, I've been we, asked. We can but, ask him when yeah, we talk to him. I, yeah, it, it seemed like he didn't coach anywhere last year, so maybe just a year off, which, listen, this fall it was uh, crazy for everybody. Not everyone even played, right, in college football. So, yeah, it was different. And the last name, Funk, I mean, come on. There's a lot of marketing that could be done with that last yes. name. That's, that's great. Yes. Uh, I, I like Our graphics what, team is going to have a heyday. They already did. I'm just looking at the combined experience between Kevin Clune and Daryl Funk and what BYU did yep. last season with who they bring back now. I, that, I'm, I'm telling you, that what that screams to me, the messaging there is, we're not messing around. We're no. ready to win now. No, and high-level guys want want to be at BYU. Yes. Oh, there's an opening at top 15 2020 team BYU. How about that? Who has, uh, you know. Uh, top 10 uh, amount of wins in the last 40 years. Uh, yeah, sign me up. And an amazing schedule and a national TV contract and their own network. Like, obviously, it's, uh, it's something that's attractive and awesome. So I'm excited. I hope that translates into a continuation of what we saw this year, which was really high play from BYU. Now, that's because BYU had good players, good coaches. The schedule certainly uh, helped quite a bit in, the, in this process. That won't be there this year. But hopefully BYU can... Be better than we think. Because right now we sit here and we kind of go, okay, based on how BYU's traditionally played against this many Power Fives, da 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 seven and six feels like kind of the starting point for this season. But I won't be shocked either way because of how hard it is and the way BYU's going to play. Like, I wouldn't be shocked if BYU won nine games. It'd be overachieving. It'd be awesome. I also wouldn't be shocked if BYU underachieved a little bit just because it's hard with seven Power Fives. But this, the ceiling is is higher than seven, for sure. Seven, to me, is the starting point for the conversation. Eight or nine, certainly the goal. Ten feels kind of crazy. Ten feels crazy. <laughs> but uh, nine would be excellent. Clearly, Daryl Funk jived with not only nice. Coach Satake, right, <laughs> but Aaron Roderick. Aaron Roderick's yeah. the new offensive coordinator. Yeah. You have to know he was a heavy influence in selecting who's going to be a member of his 
offensive staff as the coordinator there. And Kalani Satake, um, you know, at Utah, and Aaron Roderick at Utah, they probably had a relationship with Daryl Funk, who was at San Diego State, before. Now those He spent were- time at Oregon State. Oh, uh, Funk did? Yeah, I think. Yeah, right? Oh, no, I... I- didn't know he was at Oregon State. Okay. If he was at Oregon State, then there's another connection. That's I don't great. know if the timelines overlap, but perhaps. Yeah. Um, connections in, the, in this game. Like, you don't burn bridges in coaching, right? Um, because you're going to connect at some point down the road with somebody from, hey, we're in the same league or we're on the opposing coaching staff. We, you just pay attention to that stuff. But I, overall, I like this hire. Uh, when you say, hey, we're bringing in a former Power 5 O-line coach who's been in the game for 33 years, 25 on the O-line. No, has played against BYU, understands exactly what BYU is, and multiple stops, that's good. Because BYU is a unique place. If you yeah. don't get what BYU is and don't want to be here, that's one thing, right? But he wants to be here. No, let me correct myself. He was not at Oregon State. Okay, just San saying. Diego State. That was Colorado State. Yeah. Not Oregon State. That was Kevin Kloon. Yeah, Kloon, Kloon yes. was at Oregon State. Yes. Actually took over his D.C. after Kalani Stock came to BYU. Yeah. So that's fun. Okay, coming up, Gideon George's brother can ball two. Plus, how will Gideon George fit into our prop picks for the BYU Basketball Showdown with college basketball Goliath Gonzaga? This is BYU Sports Nation. This segment of BYU Sports Nation is presented by Tim Daly Auto Group, serving Utah since 1968. BYU Sports Nation's Rise and Shoutout is presented by Mountain America Credit Union, guiding you forward. BYU Sports Nation, always available on demand via the BYU TV and BYU radio apps. Don't always download the podcast. Just Google BYU Sports Nation podcast, subscribe, review, and rate. Hey, let's have some fun and get to our Gonzaga prop picks presented Gone by what? Tim Daly Ford, part of the Tim Daly Auto Group serving Utah since 1968. This is where we bring in the fabulous Ben Bagley. Yeah, I'm a little unclear. Was that Gun, Gun, Gonzaga, Gun? I think it's Gonzaga. <laughs> oh, okay. Hey, you're back on camera, by the way. It's been a minute. Hi. Rocking that jazz sweatshirt, too, baby. First yeah. place in the NBA. Hey, you, you didn't Band start wearing that until they got good. Bandwagon fan. <laughs> All right, number one prop pick. Which BYU Cougar will lead the team in scoring in the second half? He's uh, won me a lot of these prop pick contests, so I'm going to stick with big shot Brandon Averett for this one, Jerem. I'm going Gideon George. Uh, he's going to he's going to start, but he's going to play a little more in the second half. Hopefully, BYU has this competitively. If uh, you know, if not, he, he had 11 points in the first meeting. Um, you know, coming off of 19 and 13, so hopefully he leverages that into a good play against Gonzaga. Number two. It's been all over this pl- the place this season so far, so I'm going to ask a question. How many minutes will Gideon George play in tonight's game? Um, I'm going to go with 22 because I see the numbers 222 in front of me right now. So 2022, 20, Jerem. That's time left in show. Uh, so let's just take it for a sec. We have some time left. Nope, nope. 26 <laughs> minutes is what I think Gideon George will play. He'll play more tonight. He's going to leverage, again, that that really playing well um, you know, vibe he's got going from the Portland game. Number three. Last one. What will be the largest lead of the game for BYU? Oh, we didn't boy. lead last time. We were both off on that, right? Yeah, I think oh. I said uh, four last guy, last time. I think you went with six last time as well. Or yeah. Seven, something like that. I'm going with six, but I kind of want to change to, like, no lead. <sighs> I think BYU. Positive thinking. Blue goggles on. Yeah. Yeah. BYU okay. will six. have a six. game high lead of five points. You say six? Six. Blue goggle yeah. alert. Six. Blue goggle alert. Leave, leave those blue goggles on for our question of the day, Jerem. I shall. <laughs> Which is, if BYU beats Gonzaga tonight, would it be the best win over Gonzaga all time? Our elite voice of the day presented by Sundance Mountain Resort from at Cougar Stats in on Twitter. I think it's almost mathematically impossible to be better than beating a 29-0 Gonzaga team in the kennel on senior night, which actually, with actual humans rather, packing the stands – after trailing 18-2 to two, five minutes in. Yeah, that's pretty good. Okay, today's Rise of Shoutouts are presented by Mountain America Credit Union, guiding you forward. While Gideon George's brother, uh, while Gideon George was dominating Portland Thursday, his brother makes this shot oh. in uh, Nigeria for the win, playing, uh, playing some hoops. So uh, congratulations to Gideon's brother. Don't know his name, but that's a, he's, a, he's a walking bucket too. His name's Miracle? Oh, I, th- I didn't realize that. That's an amazing name. Miracle I love that. George? 
Okay, my rise and shout out goes to Zach McCorder, who set a new school record for BYU. Yeah. Indoor pole vault record. Jumped 18 feet, 10 and three quarters inches. He's number two in the NCAA and an Olympic trials qualifier. He's legit, dude. Congrats. That's Man awesome. And fly. Our thanks to today's guest, Dan Dickow. Sergeant Dennis Pitta, we ran out of time. Combo continues 24 7 on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Use the hashtag BYUSN. For Jerem Jordan, I am Spencer Linton. Shout out to Donny Atuaya. We'll see you for BYU Sports Nation tomorrow as we react to BYU and Gonzaga. Go Cougs.